Good day, fellow investors. I received an amazing comment, well, not a comment, practically a book with 20 reasons why the stock market will crash. And those 20 reasons perfectly summarize what's going on in the market, what are the fears that plague investors at this moment, and therefore I decided to go through all those 20 comments, reasons, to give you a perspective on what investing really is, what matters, and how does it fit you? What decisions can you make in this environment? Number one, 330 trillion of dollars of very poor credit markets that needs to be deleveraged. So needs to be deleveraged, that implies that you need to repay the debt, but there are other ways to repay the debt. That's very important to understand. Inflation is man-made, Warren Buffett, and just a 4% inflation rate over 10 years, over the next 10 years, would ease debt concerns and ca cancel large parts of government debts. Anything can happen, it will be definitely volatile, but I somehow feel, we'll see if I'm right or wrong what will happen, that the governments will go for currency sacrification, higher inflation, like it was the case in the 19th 70s. If you look at the inflation rate in the US and globally also in the 1970s, this was really, really staggering. Something we haven't seen for a very, very long time. So nobody's thinking inflation, but it was there 40 years ago. However, if we think of that as a bad negative period, it's actually not that bad. The thing is that economic growth rates were pretty good, 5%. A little bit of recessions, but then again, again, great growth rates, real growth rates, then again, recession. So to solve this debt problem, it can be engineered with inflation, sacrificing a little bit of currencies. And through these 20 topics that we'll discuss, we'll discuss a lot of inflation and things that can be solved, managed by the Fed and by the government. One thing that can't be managed that quickly or might not be the focus, especially in this environment, are buybacks. And buybacks are expected to fall 50% in 2020. This is from JP Morgan, the expectations. So really, with the, those will be hit. But that will be the level of 2012, 2013, 2017, 16. So it won't be that bad according to current, let's say, positive expectations. And if we look at how the cash the SP500 companies use their cash, so buybacks are just 29% of their usage of cash. Capital expenditures, rule, research development, acquisitions, dividends, and then buybacks. So if you cut buybacks, there will be a cut of dividends, but it's not about what happens in 2020. It is about what will happen over the next 10, 15, 20 years. That's investing. Investing is discounting the future cash flows from today to judgment day at the present interest, at the present discount rate, which is also, alongside inflation, the key when it comes to assessing whether the stock market will crash or not. And you'll see that through this video. On buybacks, of course, buybacks were very, very high in the last few years, similarly to the situation in 2007. We'll see how those will go now but there are buyers so there is a lot of money on the sidelines that is coming in because other options like treasuries have very very low interest rates and that's what's going on and then number three low economic growth economy for over a decade barely growing at one percent average despite all the endless rounds of quantitative easing well that's not really correct the global economy is still growing at 3%. And it even accelerated from the 1980s with the emerging market crisis, etc. Historically, it grew extremely slowly. So we are still in a good environment. Plus, if you look at the expansion average over the last 10 years was 2.1%, compared to an average expansion average of 2.7% for the United States. However, this is on much shorter periods of expansions, while well, this was a 10-year expansion. So longer expansion with slower growth, giving more perceived stability, which, which can be one way of looking at this. Number four, consumer debt ratios are unsustainable. Well, 
those were more higher in 2007, 2008. And then what Ray Dalio would call a beautiful deleveraging, they have declined, especially as interest rates go down, the debt cost, the servicing cost of that debt goes down. Here is the debt service ratio cost compared uh, to disposal personal income. And we see that it's actually below the rates that it was when interest rates were higher over the past 40 years and much lower than the 13.2% in 2007. Also, if we look at the total liabilities of households, those are 80% of GDP, 16.6 trillion, but those are very little compared to total assets of 134 trillion. Yes, a lot of these assets are from low interest rates like real estate prices that go up, pension funds that go up, values, and other financial assets that go up, but that's what it is. Also, if we look at number five, high stock market indicators, that's totally right. In history, there have been only, actually, there has been only one time where stock market ratios, in this case, the Schiller price earnings ratio that takes into account 10 years of earnings was a close to 30. So average 10 year earnings price to earnings ratio is close to 30. And that was also only the case in 2000 during the dot com bubble. And we know how that ended with a 50% crash. So when you look at it from that perspective, okay, that's what we have. And also the average over the last 25 years was 16.48. We are now to the upper bo border of that, also above 20 for the normal price earnings ratio. So price earnings ratio should be around 22 now. And we'll get even worse if stocks keep going up and earnings will get decimated due to the situation. But this is what we have to focus on. Earnings, 30 price earnings ratio on average over the last 10 years, using 10 year earnings, that will lead to a 3% earnings yield plus 2% growth due to inflation, economic growth. And that's a 5% earnings yield. If I look at what's the alternative, the 10 year treasury constant maturity rate, I see that it gets a yield of 0.68% per year. So stocks will likely deliver a return that's up to 10 times better than the current return on the treasury. Therefore, if you put it in that perspective, stocks are still extremely cheap. And that's something we'll, we'll see how it will evolve in the future. Also, if we look at real yields on the 10-year treasury, so you take the 0.68 minus 2% of inflation, and you get a negative yield. Each time in history when there were negative yields, like 2015, 2012, 1970s, 19, begin 1980s, those were great times, especially in the 1950s. Those were amazing times to invest in stocks. So again, another perspective. Bond market recession, the yield curve inverting when the yield on the long-term treasury is higher than the short-term treasury, that we say it signals a recession. And we can see that each time it reverts, it signaled a recession. And it reverted in August of 2019 and it signaled the current recession, which we are already getting out of. So we might have seen it already. Plus, if we look at recessions and stock market crashes, this is the grayer, darker grayer is the stock market crash. You see that the bottoms, in this case not, but the bottoms are usually in the midst of the recession. Here we didn't even have a recession. Here, recession bottom, end of recession, bottom, middle of recession, bottom, end of recession, bottom, end of recession, bottom. So if we are already over the recession, then the current stock market crash was at the bottom of that recession, which was 24th of 22nd of March, 2020. So that's also a perspective. Yes, we have had the yield curve inverting. Yes, we already had had a recession and a crash. So now we are on to the next cycle. Also, no more money, M3, but we see M3 money that includes M2 plus savings, longer term deposit in banks and everything is going up 
because of the Fed's intervention. Little corporate earnings expansion over the five, last five years. Actually, it was over the last 15 years because earnings didn't go far over the last 15 years. But that's how earnings work. You have these long periods of stable earnings and then, boom, spikes, spikes, spikes. So it goes in shifts. It doesn't go linearly. So who, you never know when will earnings spike, but it's likely due to inflation, due to growth, due to productivity, that those will spike sometime in the future. And that's what you are investing in. Also, it doesn't really matter. Earnings didn't go far from 1969 to 1995, but those that invested in 1982 without earnings growth did extremely well. So it's the earnings that matter, not that much the earnings growth, and then the interest rates to which you compare those earnings alongside, of course, inflation, which are also the topics that are counterweighing all these 20 amazing topics that I found in this comment. So these are all well thought, well placed comments and I wish they were, weren't were there so that we can invest all with more peace. Those are all there so it's not an invention but we also have to give a different perspective just to put things into let's say a more rational perspective and then you can make your own decision. 90% of bonds close to junk. Well, 41 trillion in the US dollars. The Fed is buying US bonds. So, okay, the Fed can buy anything they want. Similarly, in developed markets, y Europe, Japan, they can buy whatever they want. So, actually, the only issues are emerging markets. And then again, emerging markets have much, much higher yields. So, this is a normal market for bonds. These are already compromised by the ECB intervention, Bank of Japan intervention, and US intervention. So if they keep intervening, then that isn't an issue. It might lead to inflation, but we'll see that in the future. Also, if you look at the corporate debt levels, the average duration went up because companies want to take advantage of lower interest rates. And then worst recession since the Great Depression, yes, but also the biggest intervention since like ever. So that's something that counterweighs the recession that we will see over this quarter and over the past quarter, but also it counterweighs that it creates also the rebound that we are already seeing within the economy. The recession might, all, might already be over and we have seen the crash that everybody was anticipating. The question whether we'll see a next one is now hanging, but it might take some time. We will certainly see you next time, but probably not because of the current reasons. We'll see. Then debt to GDP, 150% to 30%, 300% range. Okay, keep in mind that the US can't go bankrupt. The Fed can print money, they can borrow that money that they print, and they cannot go bankrupt. They can sacrifice the value of the currency, they can debase the currency, the dollar can lose value will probably lose real value, but they can't go bankrupt. And if they allow for some inflation, little inflation over time, then it's not such an issue. Now, on the how many stocks represent the S&P 500, like all the other stocks are crashing, just the five top stocks are growing, well, that's investing. If you just have a few winners, then you grow. I used Microsoft to make this presentation, Apple to film and edit this video, Amazon to order my lights and all the books that we are reading here on the channel, Facebook, you can also watch this video on Facebook if you're watching this on YouTube, then you're using Alphabet, j and J. I'm not using, let's short that, Berkshire is there, Visa, well, you can use that to buy my stock market research platform. If you are a sophisticated investor interested in specific investments and research reports, you can also use MasterCard. So all these companies are always something that we use and therefore the weight in the S&P 500 index. It's all about most of these companies will not be there, but some will be much bigger. And that's normal when it comes to investing. March 30% stock crash. It's not normal for healthy markets to crash 45% and swing back up in a matter of a month. Well, if you look at what happened in markets, if you look at yearly jumps, 
normal it's normal for yearly returns to be 20 20 30 percent it's also normal to see declines of 30 percent especially intra-year declines so i wouldn't say this is not something normal fibonacci level 3000 head and shoulders well my left shoulder was a little bit lower than the right shoulder in high school we fixed that up a little bit and that's all i can say about head and shoulders technicalities now bear markets on average last 15 months well that's the average we have seen bear markets of 60 months of six months seven months three months in 1987 and now one month then if the bear market is already over i can also say that the bull markets last 30 40 on average 54 months so five six what's that uh, four five years so we are might be in the next four five year bull market that's also something you don't want to miss the key here is let's say doom and gloom perspective is that wall street will be soon shorting the market to drive it down and buy it later much cheaper so the key is to buy stocks and that's also my message at the end you will see that everybody wants to buy them so all those that hope for a crash might just want to buy them cheaper they are out they have missed the train or something like that so you never know whether it will be six months one month 120 months but that's what investing is and this is the confirmation that even those that hope for a crash they hope to buy again the stocks to again be investors retired baby boomers pulling money out of the stock market like there is no tomorrow well let's dissect this these guys the top one percent don't need to sell anything they live of dividends top 10 percent also they live of dividends investments businesses whatever these guys okay they might need to sell their pension entitlements to fund their pensions or their equities perhaps also their homes but there will be leverage to buy their home so this is just the trillions of dollars that we might see selling over the next 10 20 years that's what about 15 trillion dollars from 20 million people okay baby boomers it will have an impact and it already has an impact but there are buybacks covering up for this however if i look at this we are currently seeing and we will see over the next 10 15 years 1.2 billion people added to the middle class 20 15 20 million 1.2 billion so this is the driving force that will drive higher earnings sales and everything buy more cars buy more homes use j even j and j so we might not want to short that but that's what investing is and this is what's going on in the world don't forget that and i don't know whether it will lead to a stock market crash or boom but we have to put things into perspective now berkshire hathaway sold 8.6 billion of equity and only bought 4.4 billion of equity in 2020. Warren, would you mind taking this question? Well, I've been actually been a personal net buyer of stocks ever since I was 11, every year. And, and uh, uh, there's been 15 American presidents in my lifetime, more than a third. I've lived under a third of the life. I didn't buy stocks under Hoover. I was only about six months old then. But, but there have been seven Republicans after that and seven Democrats. I bought stocks under every one of them. Now, I haven't bought stocks every day. There have been a few times I've thought stocks were were really quite high, uh, and I've even written an article once or twice, but that's very seldom. But you wrapped up your partnership at one point. I wrapped too. up my partnership once because, because you of thought that. it was too expensive. Yeah. Thanks, Warren. Let's continue. Number eighteen. For those that are screaming inflation, they are dead wrong. It will be deflation. Well. That again depends on what you focus on. There is inflation in financial assets as those are going up so that we are seeing as any investors, we have to focus on that. If there is no statistical inflation, they can keep printing and saving our assessments and that's what they are doing. And even better, if there is no inflation, they can keep doing that without risking hyperinflation. And what are we going to focus on when it comes to investing, to your long life cycle investing? The last few months, the last few years, or the real long term? Let me show you this. This is US house, median house prices, sales prices over the last 57 years. It was, the home price was 17,800 in 1963. Now it is 327,000. That's an increase of 18 times. Why? Because of 
inflation, economic growth. So yes, we might see periods with no growth, declines, but this is the long-term trend. If you're an investor, you focus on the long-term trend. Also, market pundits are telling you to buy the market, buy invest in stocks. Of course, Ray Dalio went short the market in 1982 because all these indicators told him, oh, it's time to go short, it will crash, it will be terrible. And then he lost everything. He was so broke that he had to borrow 4K from his father. On the other side, when I wrote Ray Dalio 1982, this video came out in Google, which is my video of Buffett buying stocks big in 1982, countering to Ray Dalio going short. And if we look at what Warren Buffett is actually saying there is always trouble coming. There was trouble coming in 1942 when I bought that first stock. All kinds of trouble. The Philippines were going to fall pretty soon. There's all kinds of trouble. There will always be trouble. And as in 2008, there was a lot of trouble. He wrote, trouble is coming, but I said, buy stocks. Because you are an investor, you invest in businesses. That's his message. Despite all these negative situations that we will have, and we'll have even more trouble. Then to conclude, number 20 is the reason is no vaccine. I'll touch that in a moment. But here there is a really, really nice part about capitalism on the way up and socialism on the way down. And even if this is unfair, disagreeable, this is what we are living in. And there is always, the market might be irrational, this might be irrational, but as Keynes said, the market might remain irrational much longer than you can remain solvent. So if you want to read this, pause the video. It's pretty right. But then again, it concludes like everybody wants to buy stocks. So again, biased on, okay, let stocks go down so that I can buy them cheaply. On the vaccine, well, this is where I live, Slovenia. Did my hair uh, beginning of May, I have to do it again now. Open daycare, bars were open all the time, terraces. And this is the situation with new cases. So really, really zero, zero, zero. So we are free, we have been to Germany, people are traveling already for the last weeks and we have seen no new outbursts, which is a positive. So we might not even need a vaccine if things are resemble this also in other parts of the world. So the key takeaways, this is investing, as Warren Buffett said, this is trouble, there will be ups and downs, there will be crashes, but Bill Gates didn't sell Microsoft because it was in a bubble and took his money. He invested in businesses, earnings, earnings growth, and that's what made him who he is now. Despite all the issues, market issues, and then individual stocks issues from monopoly issues, etc. And if we go and quote Tolstoy, all happy families, this is all the happy issues you have when you have to invest. All happy families resemble each other, but each unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. And if you invest in individual stocks, you have a lot of unhappy in its own way families stocks but the positives usually outweigh the negatives over the long term and that's investing climbing a wall of worry and this is normal these crashes are normal we'll see many more crashes but also look at the positives the positives will also be there great years like we had a great year 2019 there will be more crashes more great years welcome to the world of investing. So for investing videos and this mindset analysis, accounting, uh, stock analysis, please subscribe to this channel. We also help some charities with the money we get from YouTube ads. So you're doing some good. For more structured learning, I'm putting the most important videos that give long-term value to into a stock market course. That's free YouTube videos plus written report if you prefer learning. So please enroll in the free course. If you're a sophisticated professional investor, you can check my stock market research platform with dedicated reports on stock, stocks analysis and stock earnings alongside my portfolios.